Hey everyone, it's Rachel. So there have been some rumors going around on the internet that nitrile gloves, the stuff that we've been using during the pandemic, is actually bad for your skin and it's bad for your health in general. The claims are that chemicals leach into your skin while you're wearing them and so that's why when you pull them off your hands are really sweaty or more sweaty than they normally are and that's the reason that your hands are more wrinkly than usual when they get all pruney. This issue started during the pandemic when people were wearing gloves consistently. People like retail workers, fast food workers, and pretty much everyone else that were wearing gloves consistently. People were wearing gloves because they were trying to avoid contact with anything directly with their hands. That way they didn't have to wash their hands as often. We all realized that washing our hands a ton dried our skin out like crazy. So gloves seemed like the perfect alternative. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna find out if nitrile gloves really are toxic and if there's any better alternatives to them. Nitrile gloves were invented in the 1980s by two men named Neil Tillotson and Luke DeBecker. The final formula was finalized in the 90s and the patent was given to the Tillotson Corporation in the 90s as well. Nitro gloves became an essential part of the HIV AIDS explosion during the 1990s and the 2000s, particularly in Malaysia. This is where most of the nitro glove factories are actually located. This health crisis demanded that the factories in Malaysia make tons of these gloves. These nitro gloves became extremely popular as well because many people were finding out that they had latex allergies, and these gloves quickly became the most popular gloves used in the healthcare field. So what is nitrile and what is it made of? So nitrile is actually a synthetic latex or rubber that's resistant to oils and petroleum fuels. Also, nitrile gloves are three times more puncture resistant than latex or rubber gloves. So how are nitrile gloves actually made? Making the chemical nitrile is way more cost effective and easier to do than making latex or rubber. They take glove forms that look like someone's hand and they dip it into a calcium nitrate solution. The solution then coagulates onto the hand form and this layer will actually determine how thick the glove is going to be in the end product. Once this layer solution has dried completely, they then dip it into the nitrile solution. After this, an air hose blows the glove off of the hand forms and into a bin where they move on to their next process. So technically a nitrile glove, there's three different processes that they can go through. I'm sure you've heard of powdered nitro gloves and non-powdered nitro gloves. Powdered gloves is where they add an eighth teaspoon of cornstarch into the glove, and this makes it easier for them to be put on. Some gloves go through a chlorine process that makes it slick and easier to slide on and off of your hand. And if not the chlorine process, the third type is a polymer coating that does the same thing. It just makes it more slick to slide on and off. So the three things we just talked about, the powder, the chlorine, and the polymer coating, those are all called donning agents. A donning agent is a substance that is used to help putting something on or taking something off. Without them, nitro gloves would be nearly impossible to get on, especially with even slightly damp hands. And it's already hard enough to get them on with slightly damp hands already. The problem with the donning agents is they're safe when they're inside of the gloves, but it seems to me that the issue actually arises when you take the gloves off. The common practice right now, at least in retail stores, fast food places, and healthcare places, is to wash your hands in between every glove change. But many people actually don't do that. Many people will just reach for the next pair of gloves and put them on after taking off an old pair. So when you take off a glove, the donning agent can be left on your hand, on the surface of your hand. And so when you go to grab your new pair of gloves, that donning agent that's on your hands are now going to transfer to the outside of your new gloves. Those so therefore, the donning agents are going to go onto anything that you touch from there on out, whether it's someone else, food, any kind of items that you're selling at your store, and it'll get on other people's hands, and that's where the issue really pops up. Another example of a donning agent would be calcium carbonate. This is similar to cornstarch. It's a powder that's actually found in Pepto-Bismol. Many people use calcium carbonate as a way to relieve their stomach pain. It's actually safe to consume in small amounts, and it's very unlikely that a glove will carry more than an eighth of a teaspoon inside. The only issue that I found so far in my research is that it hurts if you get it in your eyes and that you do need to rinse it out right away. So this is just one of the explanations so far that I found why nitro gloves can be toxic. 
Um, I think that in high amounts, potentially if you're getting it on the outside of your gloves, the donning agents on the outside of your gloves, and then touching food, I think that that could become an issue. But so far what I've read is these chemicals are safe in small amounts, and it's rare that you'll get any high amounts of this on the outside of your gloves. Now what I'm basing this information off of, the toxicity of nitro gloves, is the studies that I found that have been performed on nitro gloves and the donning agents used inside of them. These studies are few and far between. They have not conducted that many studies on nitro gloves and how much it absorbs into your skin. Most manufacturers don't perform clinical trials on their gloves, especially if they're multi-purpose use gloves and they're not being used specifically in surgery or other types of specialized medical fields. They usually don't perform these types of studies since it's not a medication and it won't be ingested. They just have to follow the FDA's rules on the guidelines of how to manufacture the nitrile gloves and what kind of tests they have to pass in order to be approved by the FDA and be put onto the market. From all the scientists and researchers that I've read, they have all determined that there is not enough studies done on nitrile gloves to really determine their toxicity and determine if they are dangerous or if they're harmless. So it just seems like more studies need to be done. So after learning about the donning agents, finding out that they're really only harmful if ingested in high amounts, harmful if inhaled in high amounts, meaning you work in the factories with the donning agents, I would say that nitro gloves are really not toxic for wearing on the outside of your skin. I don't even think eating a glove would be harmful other than potentially causing a blockage in your intestines. I think that, like I said, in high amounts, it can be dangerous, just like any chemical. I would agree with the scientists and researchers so far that more studies do need to be done. It was very difficult to find these studies that I found already. But since these gloves have been in use since the 90s with little to no changes made, and we haven't seen any long-term effects this far, I think it's safe to say that they are safe to use, especially like now when we're using them consistently all the time. The only thing I've seen so far is that it can aggravate eczema. It doesn't cause eczema, but it can aggravate it in people that are predisposed to it. Personally, I would still feel comfortable wearing them at work which I pretty much wear them every day. So I would feel comfortable continuing to wear them. I would much rather prefer them to touching the BPA receipts that I have to, to touch at my work every day. I actually made a video about that. It's already uploaded to my channel. That video is actually what led me here. We were talking about, okay, what if we wear nitro gloves to protect ourselves from the BPA receipts? And that is where I decided, well, wait a second, are nitro gloves actually toxic as well since we're wearing them and sweating on them? I just highly recommend that you change your gloves, you wash your hands, and you put new gloves on with clean hands. Never cross-contaminate. As a reminder, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a healthcare professional in any way. I'm just here to help you find out the truth and do a little bit of digging for you. That way you don't have to search the web like I had to do and find these studies that gave me little to no information. I will be linking all of these studies in my description and you can do all your own research as well and I highly recommend that you do it. It's really important to take everything you hear on the internet with a grain of salt and go forward with this information and do what you wish with it. There are some safer alternatives to gloves, but so far what I've read, every chemical has its pros and cons, just like nitrile. Latex has that severe allergy issue, and same with rubber. Nitrile is a bre more breathable compound, whereas wearing rubber gloves, you will literally sweat so much <laughs> under rubber gloves. So I definitely think you should do your own research and find what gloves are great for your skin. There are tons of nitrile gloves out there that don't have donning agents. That's something that's interests you. I think that's something you could go for. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Let me know down in the comments if you wear nitro gloves and if you've ever had any reactions or strange, weird things that have happened while wearing them for long periods of time. I know that eczema is one of the biggest complaints, but it'd be cool to know if anyone else has experienced anything else. Please give me a like and please subscribe to the channel. I will be coming out with tons of more health chat videos for us to go over and talk about risks and new things that are popping up, rumors that are going around and find out if they're true or not. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.